So, Vince, what do you want to talk about? Doctor, what's going <laughs> what's, on, bro? What's going what's on? What's up, Vince Russo? This is uh, another episode of Legion of Raw. We got some stuff to talk about tonight, including a possible reference of this show during a Raw episode uh, that we just watched from Cody Rhodes himself. So, we're going to d- bro, dive into that. Guys, listen. I'm going to do what I always do on this show, what I always do on Russo'sBrand.com. I do a I do a live YouTube show every Thursday. I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to smarten you up. I'm going to give you a little bit of history because a lot of you were not around when I was around. Mm-hmm. So l- l- let's put this all out on the table once and for all. Okay? Bro. I was around, okay, when Dusty Rhodes was a special attraction for the WWWF. Hmm. I'm not talking about polka dot Dusty. Hmm. I'm talking about when Dusty was doing Georgia, Florida, you know, Vince Sr. would bring him in once in a while, and he would be a special attraction for the WWWF. That's where I first saw Dusty. Bro, Dusty Rhodes was never a WWE guy, ever, ever, bro. That's not where Dusty made a name for himself. That's not where Dusty became an icon or a legend. That's not where Dusty got fame and fortune. Dusty Rhodes was never a WWE guy, and if you've been around as long as I have, you've known that. So so Cody has made this whole angle about his dad never getting a WWE title, so he's going to get the title and he's going to hand it to his mother. Bro, he was never a WWE F guy ever, ever, bro. He was WCW. He was Georgia Championship Wrestling. He was never – bro, you know what it's like, Chris? Here's what it's like. This happens a lot in baseball. A guy has a 20-year career with one team, and then for the last year or two of his career, he plays for another team. He'll never be part of that other team he played two years for. It's it's what his career was based on. We see that all the time. Cody had, bro, this has nothing to do with Dusty. Dusty was never a WWE guy ever, bro. He didn't get cheated out of any title. There were 10 guys before him that were established in the WWE. Cody has made this all about Cody. And quite frankly, he has used the the Dusty story when Dusty never should have been the WWF champion ever, bro. Because he wasn't around long enough. He wasn't a part of, you know, when they, when you always talk about wrestling and the WWF, Chris, you know, you always talk about New York. He was never a part of New York, bro, ever. Now, if he was in Georgia and Florida for all those years and never won a title, th- that's one thing. He was never a freaking WWE guy. Can we please get that out on the table? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess for Cody, he's using the uh, the the joint show that uh, Dusty did uh, against uh, Superstar Graham, I think it was, and he held the uh, title up, and it, but he didn't win um, the title. He just held it up at the end, and so when they used to do the joint shows back in the day, that's really what he's using. I mean, that's what uh, during his first promo, man. That's what that's the footage that he used. Was was the time where he almost won it, came close. I think it was the MS, MSG show, if I'm not mistaken, when they were do they would bring people from you know NWA, and then uh, Dusty did the show, and you know he wasn't going to win the he, he like to your point, he wasn't a WWE guy, so he wasn't going to win the WWF uh, championship, WWE championship. He wasn't going to win that. They were just teasing it because it was a joint show. So he wasn't a WWE guy to win the title. It was just him, you know, appearing for the for the company. 
Uh, so he's using that and he's running with it, man. But the thing is, the story, this story hasn't been exclusively that. It's been a little bit of this. It's been a little bit of that. It's the rock come. And it's just they haven't really weaved it in that much. I'm not too opposed of Cody using this as a as an angle, as an arc, so to speak. Uh, but at the same time, it's just I wish that they would would have weaved it in better and made it make sense to your point to people who are just watching or who are new Cody, new fans who don't really know who Dusty Rhodes is or don't even know the story of Dusty Rhodes. They should have done that better with weaving that in, I think, if they're going to use this as the main arc of a, you know, to WrestleMania storyline, I wish they would have done better with it. And that. bro, the freaking crying again! I'm I'm gonna give a fake title to my mother. I mean, that, that that's what we're talking about here, bro. Cody ain't beating anybody, guys. This is a movie. This is a television show. So it's gonna get scripted, whether Cody wins or Cody loses. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hand the prop. I'm gonna hand that prop to my mom, and I'm getting all choked up, and I'm crying. Bro, like real get freaking over it, man. This this is why real men, bro. This is why real men have been turned off to professional wrestling, bro. We don't want to see grown butt wrestlers crying in the ring every week. Bro, that's great for your Mamby Pamby marks, bro. That's wonderful. This is why real men no longer watch wrestling because every single week, bro, some can you imagine Kurt Henning crying in the ring or Rick Rude crying? Can you imagine these guys crying in Ivan Koloff crying in the ring? My God, bro, this is make believe, man. This is story time. Why are you crying every week? I swear, man, I, I really hope this dude goes to therapy, Chris. I know that's what you do. I rec Cody, I recommend Dr. Chris. He's the best therapist that I know. But, bro, if you are out there crying every single week, man, there, there is really, really, really something going on that, man, you, you need to get – off of your chest, you need counseling because this crying every single week. I am over it, bro. I, I that's why I have no interest in watching any of this stuff, bro. They, 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 these aren't wrestlers. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It's it's a few interesting elements there. So uh, as you remember, Tom, remember Tom Hanks in the League of Their Own with the yes. women's team. The women's team. What did Tom Hanks say? There's no crying in baseball, and that was a women's team, bro. Yes. All right, go ahead, Doctor. <laughs> so I'm thinking of a few elements here when it comes to that. I'm thinking of one. You know, wrestling is supposed to suspend disbelief. It's supposed to create a story. There's supposed to be an arc. Uh, yes, there's physicality in it, but it is a a story that comes with that. So the crying part, uh, I'm not I'm not going to be as uh, a, a s aggressive in that critique as you are, but I am thinking about it this way too, though. I'm thinking about it from a from a from a standpoint of characters, larger than life characters, right? So what brought us to the dance? were heroes and villains the supermans the spider-mans aka the hogans and the savages and things like that so a big name main event babyface was more of a hero you know in that space to a villain so did we uh, did we ever really see hogan cry when he was a uh, main event babyface or austin cry or savage cry you know hogan had his his weak and vulnerable moments you know say for instance when andre pulled the chain off of him he's not like this brother you know what i mean he's he's having vulnerable moments but is he crying all the time is he being too sappy no, because the thing is, he still has to protect himself being a hero to a villain. So that's 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 my take on it. Bro, you can look at any hero, Chris, in, in movies, in, in television, in books, any freaking hero. Bro, let, let's look at Sylvester Stallone. Let, let, let's look at all the Rocky movies. I, I can remember in all the Rocky movies, I can remember vividly there were two times when Rocky cried. 
The first time was at the end of Rocky One, bro, when he was emotionally spent and he went the think about what made this guy get emotional. He went the distance with the heavyweight champion in the world, bro. Nobody thought he had a shot. And 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 that all he wanted to do was go the distance. Yep. So now, bro, now his life has meaning. He did exactly what he said he was going to do, and it was very emotional. The second time I can remember Rocky crying is, I believe, Rocky three when Mick died. Mm-hmm. Okay, bro, a trainer, a guy who had a big impact on his life died. Yeah, that was it, bro. Yeah. This guy, this guy brings up his mother and he starts crying. He cried when he uh, beat Drago, right? I don't think he did, bro. We no, because because he, 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 he did it. Didn't he give the speech that if 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 like we could live together and I could live together? And, yeah, I don't I don't think he was crying during I, that. I think at the when he said, "Yo, Adrian, we did it." I think. Oh, that crying. was the first movie. No, no, because the first one he didn't win. Yeah, but that's when he did. That's when he was crying for Adrian. Oh yeah, he cried. He cried in one and two when he won. Yeah, 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 when Adrian he did. Yeah, but yeah. this guy's like mentioning, "I'm gonna give a prop to my mom," and and he's crying. Yeah, I'm, I'm bro. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sick of it, bro. I, I am so freaking sick of it, bro. And and if that's your wrestling audience, bro, if your wrestling audience want to see all your wrestling heroes cry. Bro, that I got no I got no interest being a part of that audience. Mm. I got no John Wick doesn't cry. Mm. Bro, John, they killed the puppy. They killed John Wick's dog. John Wick didn't cry, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it I think the the crying makes sense. You know, you you want to show emotion as an actor. That's what they are. But the crying makes sense if it prolongs the story. You know, what I mean, if it's if it's just like a setback to show like resilience and tenacity and coming back, you know, I'm, I'm cool with that. If it, if it's a part of the story. Um, but I think when you get to the point where you're overdoing it just across the board, then it becomes like, that's just with moves, man. Like if, when you start to overdo stuff and we're not working toward that thing being unique and special, it just feels like everything else. And it doesn't really, it, the element of it doesn't have as much impact if it's happening all the time. So. And then, bro, you know, he, he, here here he's supposed to be a baby face. And why, what do I come on here and say every single week? This guy is the farthest thing from a baby face you'll ever see. The farthest thing. So what does he do, bro? He freaking brings up his wife that nobody likes. Yeah. They, 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 they wanted so badly to boo him out the building when he brought up his wife. Bro, what what are you thinking? Do you not have you never been on social media that you know not too many people like your wife, bro? That you you are a baby face and you're bringing. Why would you do that, bro? Uh, she's she's definitely a, a heel uh, in, as far as <laughs> the pro wrestling. We'll get to the interview and we'll get to the specifics of him bringing up. Um, uh, there's podcasters that talk about me wearing suits and saying big words ladies and gentlemen yes and i also think there was like a jerry was there a jerry springer comparison in jerry springer yes because i do want to point something out too first of all bro if you're going to compare me to to the great late jerry springer i am absolutely honored uh jerry jerry springer bro he 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 really inspired the attitude era and not only that let me point something else out dr chris for the thousands and thousands and thousands of shows Jerry Springer did, I don't remember him crying on one show. Oh, that's, uh, that's true. Yeah, I don't remember Jerry Springer crying on one show. But you know someone is going, you know, Cody, you know, a Cody fan's going to uh, tag you and me and then uh, have a video. Well, here's what he cried back in 1993, <laughs> episode Forty nine, you know, uh, his <laughs> like, crying, like, his like, crying <laughs> stuff, bro. It's too much. Can you imagine Andre the Giant crying? <laughs> you know, he wouldn't cry because he's a heel, but I, I, like major okay. baby faces. Like, what about if Hulk would have cried when Andre ripped the cross off of him? Uh, he he didn't cry. He got emotional though. He didn't should have cry. cried. Yeah, should have cried. Should have cried. He should have cried though. Yes. Uh, top dog four nine nine super chat, bro. 
Question for you guys. Would you say Brett's heart snapping and cussing on Raw in 97 was the start of the Attitude Era? That's a good question for you, Vince. It very well could have been, Top Dog. I mean, I I, I remember specifically what you're talking about, and it was absolute. There, there were a lot of things that really contributed to the start of, of the Attitude Era. I think Tyson, mm-hmm. you know, I, I yeah. think that was a big big part of it but yeah bro what what brett was doing man um it it really was setting the tone yeah now was he uh was he like super and because you know brett hart is really serious about the business and really serious about protecting his character at all costs as much as he possibly can what was his initial reaction of the heel turn like what in 97 as far as being pro Canada, anti America, that that was such a, a a huge, vast difference than the the hero. I mean, he, he, speaking of heroes, Bret Hart was the hero from ninety two to ninety seven, early ninety seven. The double turn with him in Austin. How was Bret backstage as far as just that being pitched to him? Well, bro, I, I, you know, it was, you know, Chris, it wasn't what was really pitched to him, bro. You got to remember at the time, uh, you know, this is right about the time that, I mean, it's obvious that Sean is the guy Mm. and bro, Sean was everything that Brett despised. Mm. So, I mean, Brett really felt that way, not only about Sean personally, but the fact that Vince was going with Sean, that, you know, this was the direction. So a a lot of that uh, frustration, bro, was really, really, really real. Mm. And I think that's what made it so good, bro. And, you know, like I said, man, as a writer and a producer, when there's that real animosity going on you just got to go with it bro sure. you just got to let those guys go out there and say what they want to say because they're genuinely upset and if they're really upset man the, the fans are going to buy into it 100 yeah so it just he was fine with it just organically happening the way that it did mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. so was the, I think I've asked you this a while ago, refresh my memory. Was the double turned at mania planned or was it not with Shamrock as the ref? Bro, that's a good question because I wasn't really writing then. So that's a very good question. I'll say it was planned because as much as Brett despised Sean, he very much respected Steve. Hmm. So, you know, if if the WWE was going to go with anybody, Brett would have 100% ha- rather it be Steve Austin. So I, I, I would believe, bro, the pros that both of those guys were that Brett wanted to give that to Steve. Hmm. Yeah, I can respect that. Yeah. Uh, Fright Bounce podcast, $2. Will Roman Reigns break Hogan's record at SummerSlam? I don't think. Um, I still even. I still think that even if he wins at SummerSlam, he doesn't break H- Hogan's record. And there's an asterisk behind, you know, ahead of that, uh, um, that reign, the number of reigns, because I still say that you can't just backlog the universal title reign as the start of his WWE title reign. Like he mer- he won and he merged the two together, but that doesn't start his WWE title reign. So technically his WWE title reign started when he beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. So it's not the same to me. So I don't know why they keep doing that. It doesn't make sense. He won the universal championship in 2020. So he that so the, the the amount of days that he have is based on that rain, not the rain that he beat uh, Brock Lesnar. You, the yeah, no, you're right. That's what it should be. Yeah, uh, Zoo Bear Talk TV five dollars. They really main event Raw uh, with that boring Jobber Fest of Gala match because they have no ideas how to make this show better. Uh, we'll talk about it, man. You, you, you. Uh, I was, I think, I'm probably the only person who was able to break the honest horn. <laughs> I told I told you, man, it was gonna happen. We'll get to it, but I told you so. 
Uh, we got a lot of uh, super chats to get through these real quick before we get to the card. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, SK Nation. Thank you, Sports Kita. Tons of super chats here. I mean, just the weekly support. We we absolutely appreciate it. We got uh, Swazi four ninety nine. Cody Rose will not go over. I'm one thousand percent sure. Vince Russo is uh, uh, predicting that too. I, w- I, w- I just I want that to happen so bad. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I want that to happen so so. I don't think it's going to happen. Bad. I think Cody will go over, but I don't, don't know, bro. I don't know. I mean, I would, I would, I would like it to be a nice twist because bro, think know. about it for a second. Think about it for a second. If if it is a rock screwing. And then they go to Rock and Cody. Is that going to hurt Cody at all? Um, you, you you leave the, the the problem is you don't have another opponent from Roman Reigns. That's the problem. That's true. But if Rock was involved in screwing Cody, and then you go to Rock and Cody, I don't I don't think that hurts Cody one iota, bro. Rock Cody non-title. Yeah. Oof. We're at. SummerSlam. So we would have to get, we would have to hear more of this finish the story gimmick, bro. This is getting set up. Rock and Cody. I mean, they're, they're the ones slapping each other. <laughs> like seriously, they that that, that to, I, I'm watching that promo on SmackDown, and I'm like that. That's where they're going with this. Uh, I, I think that the I still think the Rock's going to turn on Roman. I think that this at was WrestleMania. All, I think this was all a ruse. I think this was all. I think that this was all a ruse to uh, uh, destroy the bloodline from within. I think that the Rock and Cody Rhodes were in cahoots the whole time, and the Rock is going to uh, cause Cody to win uh, the the match. Because I think what somehow I think somehow the heels are going to win. Uh, Bro, that 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 kind of tarnishes uh, Cody's victory. Uh, not if the bloodline gets involved, because what I think is going to happen is the the heels are going to win the tag match the first night. So then that embarks the whole bloodline rules thing. So you're expecting the rock to help the bloodline because what's going to happen is solo is going to get involved. Most likely Jimmy's going to get involved in some way. So you're going to you think that the rock's going to get involved for the bloodline when Essentially, the Rock's going to take out the bloodline and, and clear the path for that. Me. Promo was was pretty stiff, bro. Telling yeah, him you, you're, you're and, a mistake. That and that's was, the, and that's the know. thing. That's why I think that is it's, a lot of times turns become stronger when the pendulum's on the on completely the other side. It makes the turn even stronger. And I think it. I think the the point of all this, especially especially all think of it this way. If uh, Cody and Rock are willing to go, you know, take those types of uh, measures to talk about each other's family, to convince the, or the Roman Reigns that he's on his side, Cody's willing to take that. And so if all of that was a part of the ruse to, you know, uh, destroy the bloodline from within, those are it makes it even sweeter, though. I mean, because if, if the Rock, Rock bottoms, Roman Reigns helps Cody. I mean, there you go. I mean, I think you have Bro, Cody. I, 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 because I, I'm gonna say this though. You know, I, I wrote for Rock, uh, for a pretty long time, mm-hmm. and what I'm looking at is. You know, bro, I, I say this all the time. The most important thing to writing for these characters is to stay true to that character. Mm-hmm. And I wrote for Rock for a very long time, and I'm looking at Rock today. That would be so outside his character. Really? His character would not do that. The fact of the matter, bro, is th- this is a shoot. Hmm. They ch- he 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 tried to come in. He tried to replace Cody and the co- Cody crybabies, as he called them, totally one thousand percent turned against them. <laughs> Rock went into <laughs> fu mode, bro, and I I think that's the mode that he is, bro. They they can certainly do that, but I'd be watching it and I'd be saying there is no way in the world he would have done. 
Yeah, I mean, you would know that. I mean, you 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 were the one booking for him, so I don't I don't have any dog in the fight when it comes to that. I I, I think, of course, things psychologically and logically. I I do think that when it comes to business, Rock is willing to be. A, he's a pro, so he's willing to call a few audibles uh, for for the sake of business. And so, I do think that Rock will. He called an audible in this the, the the pathway, but I do think that he, to recalibrate is to make Cody win the. the uh, but I also him. think to rock. I also think to rock, based on what you're saying, and I agree with you, bro. Listen, you say whatever you want about the rock, bro. The rock's all about business and money. Oh, he, he, he would not be in the spot he was in if it was not all about business 100%. and money. So when you say that, Chris, I agree with you a thousand percent. However. I believe Rock thinks the business is with Cody. I think, yeah, I, I yeah. think that's where yeah. Rock thinks the business is. Yeah, I mean, see, the thing is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I do think that there's more. Uh, I, I think there's more money in Rock Roman, though. Like that, I think that there's because Roman still has he's he still has that larger, like that big fight appeal. Like he still has that marquee appeal. Um, Cody is. He's the golden child of WWE right now. He's like the golden boy, but I don't think he has that massive appeal as Roman Reigns does. Roman Reigns does, and I think that Roman Reigns has been protected. Uh, Cody's been protected too. He's only lost twice, you know, since he's been back. Uh, but uh, to Roman and to Drew, but I still think at the end of the day, Roman Reigns has been protected for nearly four years now. You know what I mean? So uh, he's only lost once. Uh, he lost the uh, who was it? Corbin, like late 2019, I think it was. And then after that, he only lost, he's only been pinned once since then. And that's against Jey Uso. Uh, and I, and so I think protecting Roman, they've been doing that. And I would rather see rock Roman. Cause I, what I think that they do, uh, you can have rock and Roman take a break, uh, after mania, because I think the Roman wanted to take a break anyways, and I don't see Rock being heavily involved in the television in the past in the next four months, especially since the UFL is coming up. He's not going to be. Yeah, and not, and not, not only that, it. too, Chris. It's like, bro, if a if a huge movie comes along, exactly, Rock's dropping wrestling like in a heartbeat. One hundred percent. So it, it, yeah, it all it all it all depends what all, all the other things he's got. Yeah, going on yeah. All things considered, I, I do think that Roman's out. Uh, for a while, Rock he, Rock's not going to stay. He he's not going to be on the schedule that he is now. Uh, like I said, UFL debuting, I uh, believe, in Mar uh, coming up soon. Soon, actually, in a few. Yeah, weeks. I, think, I think the end of March. Yeah, yeah. So so he's going to spend the spring, you know, the rest of the spring, focused on that project. Uh, so he'll be he'll be gone after Mania. So I think what you do is just you have him. Uh, turn on reins uh, and and help Cody clear the way out. Then that sets up Rock Reigns non-title for SummerSlam. That can be one of the big marks. And who's Cody's first opponent? I still think Seth's going to turn on Cody. Uh, it might not be WrestleMania, but I do think it'll be somewhere uh, shortly after WrestleMania. I, I do think we'll see Seth turn on Cody. Uh, I think that Drew will beat Seth um, on night two. Uh, Seth will be upset about that. Um, and then he'll, and it, you can easily say, you know, because of all the Cody stuff, I lost my focus, you know what I mean? And, and, and Drew beat me because I was out of focus because I was putting, you know, button my nose and all this bloodline stuff, you know, this really didn't have anything to do with me. I was just caught up into it because I appreciate the business. But at the end of the day, I do think, you know, that I was putting my nose in something that you caused. You caused this, this bloodline stuff. You're the one talking about their family. You're the one talking about, you know, The Rock and Roman Reigns, the, the dynasty, and bringing up stuff that, you know, I didn't have anything to do with. And so you did cause me to be distracted and call and cause me to lose the World Heavyweight Championship. I think that you can really – it's easy. I mean, I, I think at the, end of, at the end of the day, that's just – that's that's material that's kind of handed to you leading into the road to WrestleMania. So, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I could see that. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, but I just, I, I, I it's bro, not necessarily the best option. No, I'm just like, bro, I just, I, 
I swear to God, bro, the, the two guys on top are the two guys I absolutely like the worst. <laughs> I I can I I I cannot if I bro if I was not getting paid there is no way I would be sitting in front of a TV and watching Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes not in a million years. Drew McIntyre yeah yeah Drew's cool bro oh, yeah. Drew yeah. looks cool bro yeah. you you got I, I want you know again Chris I want to go to the psych psych, psych psychological part. Chris, my, my, listen, I'm getting older in age and, and I'm trying to accomplish things and do things that I've always wanted to do, but I've never done. Mm -hmm. One of the things on my bucket list, Chris, is I've always, people have heard me say this. I've always wanted Kevin Nash hair. Nice. I always want to let my, I don't care if I'm 65. I, I always, one time in my life, I want Kevin Nash hair. And what happens, Chris, is it starts growing. It starts growing. The more it grows, the, the less easy it is to take care of. You know, you wake up in the morning, your, your hair is all over the place like a nest. And then your wife starts making the comments. You need to get a haircut. You need to get a haircut. And then you finally get to the point of screw it out, getting it cut. Hmm. This free, my bit, one of my biggest pet peeves, bro, is okay, bro. So Seth Rollins has long hair. Yes. Bro, I've always wanted long hair. If I ever got to the point of having long hair, why am I putting it in a bun? Does, <laughs> does that not defeat the purpose? Kevin Nash never put his hair in a bun, bro. Drew McIntyre doesn't put his hair in a bun. I hate bunhead. I hate you bunhead do. on women yes. and especially men because, bro, <laughs> if you're going to grow your hair out, why are you putting it in a freaking bun? Just get it cut. It's so, that simple. So, so right off the bat, when he comes out with that bunhead, number one, I can't – bro, let's just, go, let's just go through it. Uh, Number one, the whiny, nasally voice. Th this is not how men talk. Men, mm -hmm. men don't talk this way. The whiny, nasally voice. The sunglasses, bro. You're, you're cutting the promo wearing sunglasses like you're Joe Cool. Then on top of that, we got... Inside, by the way. Sunglasses. Yeah, inside. Then on top of that, we got Bunhead. Okay. Then on top of that, we got this freaking ridiculous clothing every single week. Then on top of that, we got the ridiculous singing. There, there is no reason to like this guy. Like, see, I, I would challenge any, you can't, bro, here's the first thing you're going to say about why you like a guy. Why did you like Kevin Nash? Oh, Kevin Nash was cool. Why did you like Scott Hall? Scott Hall was cool. Why do you like Drew McIntyre? Drew McIntyre is cool. Why did you like the Warrior? The Warrior is cool. Why did you like Kurt Henning? Kurt Henning was cool. Seth Rollins is not cool. Cody Rhodes is not cool. You the, the the draw of especially the baby face is to want to be the baby face yeah. and live vicariously through the baby. Who who walking this earth would want to live vicariously through Seth Rollins? I, I, I'm being dead serious, bro. If I if I'm a 13 year old kid, this is the guy. No, bro. I wanted I want to be Randy Savage. Mm -hmm. That's who I want to, who would want to be this whiny, nasally, bunhead, cosplaying? And bro, he's got, he's got no game in promos. I, I mean, again, like, th th bro, his, his best line in promos is telling people to shut up. Mm -hmm. He told Rock to shut up on Friday night. He's telling Drew to shut up here. He calls, he calls Drew a coward. And bro, I swear to God, Chris, I don't. Every single promo now, we talked about this last week. Every promo ends with a mic drop. That's that's how they get out of every single promo. There's no action. The story isn't getting forwarded. 
everything they they say they've already said before. My God, bro, give me some substance. Hmm. I don't I don't think it's a lot as a television viewer to ask for. Give me some meat on the bone, bro. Yeah. I'm with you a lot of a lot of places there. I, I do think that, uh, and again, I don't necessarily agree with this, but I do think uh, an answer to your question largely is um, the today's age. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned cosplay. That's huge nowadays. You know what I mean? Like you, like a bun is not huge. I mean, I, there's times that I wear my hair in a bun when I have it. I'm going to answer your question as someone who wears their hair in a uh, hair in a bun. It's a style. It's just a sort. It's a style, just like someone. It's just like a female who has long hair. They put their Chris. Hair in the here's the here's the difference. What's the difference, Vince? You're hey, cool. You're you're cool. Thank you. You're cool. So even you have d- done the bun here a couple of times. You are cool. Thank you. Your demeanor. Uh, you're always cool. You're always calm. You're collected. You're a very cool. There's nothing cool about Seth Rollins from from the voice to the wardrobe to his promos suck. There, there's nothing cool about the guy. That's the difference, bro. To fans, his music is cool. Oh, my God. So by bro. default, he's cool. And that's I, 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 I love when Drew, bro, Drew popped me huge when they, they would get, did you notice this when they give him the what, what, like you, you, what idiots. And then he finally says, say what, if you like that, I took out CM Punk. Yes. And they all said what? I love it. <laughs> and again, it goes back to a Pavlovian just oh, that was reaction, great. man. It's just like, uh, you know, and, and I think that's, um, I watched uh, snippets of uh, SmackDown just to prep me for just this WrestleMania season. And I saw that uh, the prime uh, partnership now with, uh, with Logan Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that he played into it too much, man. I I think that he could, he needs to learn how to squelch that just like Drew did. I mean, Drew squelched it just like that. He he had the wherewithal to do it. And Logan Paul is usually really good at, at getting that type of heat, but I just think he played into it too much. He's like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm like, that's planning, playing into it. Don't, don't do that. Say, Hey, if you're stupid, say what, what? There you go. All right. Like say something yeah. like that. And, and bro, he, he, here's where I'm talking about like baby fate. They don't even understand the mentality because I, I brought up with Cody Rhodes. Why would you bring up your wife? No, yeah. nobody likes your wife, bro. Bro, same thing with Seth Rollins. He he's the baby face. Drew is the heel. And what does he say? You remind me a lot of CM Punk. They love CM Punk, exactly. bro. Like, what, uh, what are you, doing? bro? Yeah. The, 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 a guy like Seth Rollins. Bro, if he doesn't understand that at this point, that, okay, bro, Drew's the heel. I'm supposed to get Drew over as the heel. I am the baby face. They're singing along with me, this, that, and the other thing. Why am I going to take a shot at somebody they love? See, that's the thing, Vince. Psychology is such a a crucial missing element in pro wrestling nowadays. Yes. Yep. Like yep. wrestlers don't really think about the psychology of it. Like yep. if you think about psychology in – uh, the 80s and 90s, you had people like Jake, you had people like Hennick, you had, like those people were ring psychologists. They were trying to conjure up the crowd of hating them. Like they, they were doing their job correctly if the crowd hated them. And they and they understood the nuances. They understood everything that leads up. They thought about the end from the beginning and they worked their way accordingly. And so, but Seth Rollins, there's so much just immediate gratification, which, which if you study a psychologist named Walter Michel, he talks about, he talked about that in 1972 when he did an experiment about that and just longitudinal studies just show even in children, immediate gratification leads to less success and uh, less emotional stability and a whole bunch of other things, decision-making, less decision-making skills. And so we've car like wrestling is like the hub for people with who wants immediate gratification feeding into wrestlers who want immediate gratification so this is a, like if you watch 
I mean, you have a show, right, where you just, uh, you know, talk about just crazy indie spots all the time, right? And you see that even from a psychological standpoint, they're not thinking psychology. They're thinking about, I mean, we're seeing more and more how wrestling is legit becoming a drug. It's it's the drug of choice to many people. They're not thinking about it from a storyline perspective. They're looking about that that immediate gratification of getting that applause from the crowd. And the, the unfortunate part of that is that the riders are playing into that. They're not allowing cliffhangers. They're not allowing things that meat to still be on the bone. And we, we working off, uh, taking off meat from the bone every week, every week, they want all the meat off the bone. Now they want a full course meal every week, no appetizers, no nothing. And that's, and we see that every week within programming, man. It's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, uh, and the, the rest of uh, Swazi's part was too much meat uh, in the bloodline storyline. Jay, Jay Uso betrays Cody. Jacob Fatu and Zilla Fatu will be added. You you spoke highly of Zilla uh, in the show we did a while ago. Zilla's the young. young yeah, young. yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zubair five dollars <laughs> was expecting a swerve or something involving Lesnar returning in the gauntlet since he's back in the history books and get Lesnar versus Gunther, but nope. Uh, did you hear about that? That Lesnar's back on the uh, WWE page now. I, uh, I I was seeing his name a lot today, but I didn't look into it, so I didn't know yeah. that specifically. Yeah, so there are people who are expecting like Lesnar because there was about five or so minutes left, and they the how how they put the camera shot. It seems like there was a little bit of time left for someone else to come in as a surprise, but nope, that didn't happen. Michael Pasolano four ninety nine. Vince is 100% right. I was at all all those late 70s MSG matches. Uh, he used to occasionally six-man tag uh, right. against the Samoans. He was a featured attraction, bro. That is right. it, man. Yep. He never wrestled Bruno. He was no. a featured attraction. He was, indeed. Lawless, $5. Yeah, Hashtag right. Cody Crybabies. Um, are you a Cody Crybaby, Lawless? Let us know. Uh, Junior in for five dollars. Sammy Zayn. Sammy Zayn is a twenty-four year vet, not the right person to end the longest IC run ever to give it to a new bro, guy. I got. I got to tell you, I discovered something today. I didn't realize it. One of my pet peeves about Sammy Zayn is he looks like a freaking slob. Mm-hmm. His 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 beard is sovereignly. His hair is. He looks like a freaking slob. I don't want to see slobs on my TV. But then I'm watching today, bro. Ooh, is he balding badly, bro? Oh, is he? He's know. got this huge ball. And I'm because I'm watching it as it's going, he's sweating. He's got this huge ball spot. I'm like, oh, okay, bro. That's why he keeps his hair so long. Okay, now Interesting. I there you go. Finally cracked the code there, man. <clears throat> Zoo Bear, $5. Rollins thinks he's that guy with that lame with that lame insults to the rock at SmackDown acting better when he cross dresses plus midlife crisis. He's one to talk. See, bro, that that's 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 the thing. I, I'm telling you, bro. I, I I am a very very good read of people. And again, one of the problems I have with Seth Rollins, bro, I I really have an issue, bro. This is my this this is my major issue with dirt sheet writers. Uh, uh, Chris, I have a very big issue with people who think very, very, very highly of themselves. I, I, I got an issue with people like that, bro. I don't know why. I just got a big issue. And Seth Rollins is one of those people. Mm. I, I can tell by watching this guy, this guy thinks he is so freaking over. And like that, that comes across to me through the television set. And I, I just, I gotta, I, bro, you know, like y- you see a guy like Gunther, okay? You know, that's an act. You, you know, Gunther with the suits and the way, you know, that's an act. And I, I actually happened, bro, to work with that guy when he was over in Germany and the nicest guy in the world. You know, that's an act with Seth. Like, you just know in his head, bro, he just thinks he is super, super over, and he's just not. 
Yeah. He's not, bro. And like that's 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 just the issue I have, bro. You know, that's a good point about Gunther that um Christopher Daniels uh told me this before. He was talking about how like the the biggest uh baby faces or the biggest heels are oftentimes like the nicest people and they know how they know that it's an act and they know that it's a challenge to really uh give the fans a part of them that's not necessarily real but it, you're like stepping into another character you know what i mean and you feel that gunther's the same way mm -hmm. uh, i've interviewed gunther i talked to him uh, in detroit uh, off camera man i mean talk about a classy dude man mm -hmm. just a very stand-up classy nice guy and just really easy to uh, converse with, really easy to talk to, very, you know, just a very nice dude, man. Just very respectable. He doesn't, you know, he, he you can really, you, you can tell with Gunther that he's not about uh, using this to feel better about himself. You know, it's a job to him. You know, he appreciates the business. He's been, you know, wrestling for a while, but he's grateful for being in the spot that he's in. And he's just really, he's going to work. You know what I mean? He doesn't use this. You know, and I was, man, I was having this conversation with other people too about a lot of the wrestlers from yesteryear. Like, this is really their identity. So they're really still trapped in 1987 because that was like their best year. And they're going through so much psychologically that they're they're hiding a lot of that. They're suppressing a lot of those just kind of depressive thoughts because they found their identity in pro wrestling. You know, I mean, they don't even know who they are as far as real name is because they haven't even tapped into themselves for so long. They're playing a persona, they're playing a character. And that's very dangerous, man, when it comes to pro wrestling. It, it, yeah. It's really sad. Uh, we have um, Gen Z Philosophy 499. Chad versus Gunther looks competitive. Sammy versus Gunther equals my suspension or disbelief destroyed. Bro, reward Gable is for seeking athleticism is legit. What do you think, Vince? I, I, I listen, bro. I, I, there's no doubt in my mind. I think Gable would have been the better choice. Um, for for all, you know, you had a little story with the daughter. At least there was something there. You know, Gable is legit. I, I mean, 100% legit. Would would Gunther have the height and the weight and all that uh, 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 over him? Absolutely. But Gable is a blue chip athlete wrestler. Uh, and Gable versus Gunther is my, I mean, come on, bro. I'm looking at Sami Zayn, Zayn in, the, in, in the ring today compared to, 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 to Clark Gable. You guys going to sit there and tell me they spent the same amount of time in the gym? Like, really, man? You're going to tell me that, bro? That, that That's like saying Vince Russo and, and Chad Gable uh, spent the same amount of time in the, in the gym. Give me a freaking break, bro. Uh, Gable would have been the more believable opponent, but they, you know, bro, again, I, I, I've said it a million times, man. They, they, they got uh, Zane over with his comedy in the bloodline. They did not get him over on his freaking wrestling and gable versus gunther would have been much much more believe i just wish that they, if i don't disagree with that i just wish they would have put a story behind it because they're not yeah, really making chad gable uh over like he's not really being pushed well I agree. I agree. um and i think with with sammy zane it's, it's crazy man like the, they're, they're trying their best to make him relevant having him have him have a uh a, a you know reputable spot at WrestleMania. They've been doing that for a few years now, but the problem with Sami Zayn though is that there he's still riding off the coattails of of last year's you know the beginning of last year's ovation. He was one of the most popular people in all of WWE. The way that they booked him coming out of you know the bloodline, but what a fall from grace over the past year i mean if you think about march of last year compared to march of this year man like it's unfortunate that wwe doesn't invest in their characters or or doesn't invest in their talent enough to make to sustain that type of reaction yeah but chris to some point you've got to keep yourself over too bro j j just j like here's a perfect example S say randy savage was on fire yeah. Randy Savage was at 
bro, then say all of a sudden they started booking Randy Savage poorly. Mm -hmm. Do you really think that Randy Savage would have got to a point of he would have been in matches people didn't care about? N never in a million years. No, no matter what he had to do, no matter what promo he had to cut, no matter what he would have had to do to be noticed, he wasn't going to fall into a mid card category, bro. So, I you think know, that his character was strong. I think that his character was strong enough to transcend anything that was thrown. I, I agree with you, bro. But part of that is on you. Part of that responsibility yeah. is, you know, Al Snow will say this all the time, bro. And Al, Al, Al Snow, you know, is still booking to this day. Mm -hmm. and al snow will say bro once that guy walks through the curtain now it's on him bro it sure. is 100 percent on him I'm, I'm i'm as the writer the producer i'm done mm -hmm. now it is on him so you know at some point bro you've and, and bro part of that could mean speaking up in the back Mm -hmm. that that doesn't really work this doesn't make sense how about we do this bro rock did that every week Okay. Every week, Rock did that. No matter what I wrote, yeah, Vin, Vin, Vinny Rude, th this is awesome. This is tremendous. But how about if we change this? And how about if we change it? Do it. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting that you say that, Vince, because you have people who really can invest in their characters. But I think the Vince McMahon stench is still there, as far as people not believing in themselves strong enough to really feel confident to speak up because you don't even have, I mean, Vince McMahon has zero affiliation to, I mean, as, at least on paper to WWE or, you know, TKO at this point, he's, he's, he's done. He, he's, he's left. So the people, the higher ups to speak to really the biggest higher up right now, as far as just within WWE is triple H. So if Triple H already has enough investment in Sami Zayn, bringing him to NXT, you know, having him be an NXT star, bringing him to the main roster, even giving him a shot to become Intercontinental Champion, then that's when you come in and say, hey, man, I think we should twist it here. And it just seems like a lot of those characters, a lot of those wrestlers are just kind of going with the flow kind of because the morale is probably not as strong. They're just kind of coming in. What do you want from me today, boss? All right, I'll do it, and I'm leaving. A lot of them aren't really investing in themselves. Bro, I bet you, too, they're in a position now where – and it could, it could be even tougher than when Vince was there because they could be in a position now, bro, of they don't know who to go to. They don't know who's got the power. They don't know. They don't know how much stroke and power Rock has. They don't know if Triple H is really the guy. Does Ari already have a right hand man at these shows? You know, bro. They may, they may be going through that phase where they really don't know yeah. who's who's really got the stroke because that's been bothering me about this storyline as well. If 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 the Rock you know, really has a high position on the board, which he does, you wouldn't be slapping him. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be able to talk to him this way, bro. Think about it. Think about if, if, if you're an employee of a company and there's a board of directors and you slap one, th think of the consequences. So that that's really been bothering me in this story. The fact that he is on the board. He does have power. He does have stroke. You can't be freaking slapping him around and cutting promos on him and stuff like that because, boom, he, he could let you go like this. You need to figure that out in the storyline. And all it's a matter is of Rock saying, mm -hmm. bro, I could drop you like that tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow you could be gone. But that would be the easy way for you. You know, I mean, they've got to cover that in storyline. Yeah, I don't think they're doing a very good job. Now, I can agree with that as far as just the nuances to them do that. Because, I mean, you know, slapping the boss, I mean, that, that doesn't bother me because Austin did that to McMahon every single week. But at least that, that it was leading up to something. It was it was McMahon continuing to throw hurdle after hurdle after hurdle after hurdle to Austin, uh, knowing that he needed Austin and Austin realizing that. Vince needed him, but 
at the same time, Vince was willing to, because there was such a love hate relationship, but they both mutually needed each other. Right. So it was that type of element. It was Vince needed Austin because Austin was bringing butts to seats, but Austin needed McMahon because Vince McMahon was signing the checks. And so right. that element was there. there. There's no element there with Cody yeah. and rock. You know what I mean? So bring something like that in. Yeah. And, and bro, I'm telling you, because I, you know, I, I go back and I review the attitude era, but bro, when, when Austin did something physical to Vince, the next week, there was a consequence. Sure. Sure. I mean, there was always a there was never Vince didn't do there was always well this week you got taker or you know there was always yeah. a consequence to his action yeah like, like I said throwing hurdle after hurdle yeah. Yeah. but still realizing how much you, you know you yeah. needed yeah. him yeah. so yeah. um you have uh Ty Salter's five dollars with the passing of Dragon Ball rider Akira Toriyana Toriyama is there anything you want to be an influence that lasts 40 years. Is there anything you want to be an influence the last 40 years? I don't know what he means. What do you, I guess, what do you want to be? Is there something, is there something that you want to make a lasting influence? Is there something you want to do to, to have a lasting influence? I guess he's, Me? yeah. Anyone. Me? Yeah. Anyone just 40 years, either one of us. I don't know. I'm confused with the question. Uh, I, I guess my answer would be, um, I definitely first and foremost want to be a, a strong man of faith. Um, and I want to be a, a stand up Christian and represent Christ well, uh, and what I do, uh, for all my life, family man. And, um, and I want to be, uh, 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 amazing therapist, you know, continue to be amazing therapist. So that's the legacy I want to, I want to leave. How about you? Very nice. Uh, Brian, I say this all the time. All this stuff is just entertainment. Uh, you know, I want to be a, I always want to be a good father, a good grandpa, a good husband, and a good son, pe period, end of story. That, that, yeah. Those are the things that are important to me. The, the, all of this, guys, this is a job. This is yeah. how I make a living, bro. Um, but it is not who, you know, how I define myself. Yeah. Never has been. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Zoo Bear, $5. Cody thinks he's cute with the old head insult, yet it's the same old heads who kept him relevant and gave him a chance. Was totally mentioning this pod. Yeah, he was. He was definitely mentioning this pod. That's for sure. You think Cody ever sees this? Cody, you ever see this? Cody. <laughs> Probably watch. so. Yes, it did. Probably so. Uh, Zoo Bear, $5. Thank you, man. Appreciate all your super chats, my man. Thoughts on fans triggered of rock cross dressing line shows fans wouldn't survive the attitude air. Also, wished rock destroyed Rollins on bro. I got, I got, I got to tell you this, Chris. People were triggered by that. Oh, of course they were. Really, Chris? I got to tell you this, uh, Zubair, understand what you're seeing. Rock is being a total pro. Yep, rock, bro. He could, he could cook these guy like he could embarrass these guys on the mic they're, bro they're not in his league it's like a a single a pitcher you know pitching to shohei otani yeah. but because he's a pro he's not going to do that bro he's not going to do that he's going to make sure that as the baby faces they get over that is a pro bro and I can respect that. I mean, you know, let's let's with with that same logic, man. Let's let's revisit the John Cena versus Austin Theory feud of last year, and how it was DOA. I mean, it it was DOA before he even reached the the WrestleMania match. It just seems like, you know, it it was just, uh, it, it was just a part of the books. You know, it was just it was just a a, a decision made that John Cena was going to lose to Austin Theory. Do you think it was pride? Do you think, and we talked about this before, and I mentioned the fact that it seems like John Cena was really testing theory to really initiate him. But John Cena, you know, if you think about the, just the history of John Cena, he, he has a way of like being in feuds and having a way of causing the people who he feuded with just to be lesser than, or just kind of, emasculating them or demoralizing them. he's sending a message bro 
He's sending a message that, okay, bro, you, you guys want me to do the favor. Mm -hmm. I'm a company guy. I'll do the favor. However, I'm doing the favor to the wrong guy and, and he's going to be exposed. Mm. And, and bro, you know what? I'll be honest with you. That's how it should be. Mm. If, 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 if I'm going to do the favor for somebody and you want me to put somebody over, then you know what, bro, he better be up to my level because if he's not up to my level, I'm not going to sacrifice myself by bringing myself down hmm. period. End of story. And, and I, I think that's what the scene of thing was all about. He wasn't going to say no about doing the job. He's not that kind of a guy, but he's saying by doing that, bro, this dude ain't ready. And, sure. what, and and what has happened since then? I mean, there's a couple of times where I think that he didn't do well with with really focusing on putting someone over. Like there was a time where Alex Riley was red hot um, and he, you know, he didn't really put him over. Wade Barrett was another person that he was like really red hot at the time. Cena just kind of squelched that. Uh, Ryback was another person that Cena squelched. Uh, um, um, uh, Ru uh, Rusev was another person who seen his squelched Bray the first time. Uh, he had a WrestleMania match against them. You know, he he beat Bray, and so I, I do think that there's. I mean, Solo now and Austin Theory. So Cena has a history of not really putting over people you're supposed to be putting over, especially like the Brays and the Solos and stuff like that. I think Solo. I mean, he was he was on a roll, man, and then he just. That Cena freight train, boom. Man. Yeah, but Chris, what are you talking about? See, you're talking about, you know, outside of like Bray, okay? You're talking about, you know, was Cena looking at these guys like flashes in the pan? Did he really think, oh, yeah, the Ryback's going to reach my status? Or, you know, you know, there's a difference between a guy being a flash in the pan and knowing that he doesn't have the staying in the star power. So maybe now, now Bray, I would disagree with that, obviously. Yeah. But all those other guys you just mentioned, I mean, was Wade Barrett going to become the next? You, you know what yeah, I mean? but what? But 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 here's the thing with that though, like. Is there anybody really over the past 10 years at least in the WWE that is the next? No, nah, probably, probably 20 years. So you're we talking about 04? Yeah. Uh, 04, well, Cena didn't win the first. Bro, first bro, bro, think about outside of that crop. You know, when I left, okay, the first guy you had was Angle. Yeah. Then, bro, you had that crop of, you know, Batista. Yeah, that was that Lesner, 2002 class, yeah. Orton. Orton, yeah, Cena. Who's 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 there been after that? As far as the, like, the that next. Was, that, was, that was 20 years ago, bro. That was so, 02 is when they all de uh, debuted. Yeah, so tw tw over the next 20 <laughs> years, who, who we're, we're looking at, you're looking at Roman Reigns. Reigns, yeah. Think about it. Yeah. I mean, there's people, there's been people within WWE that fans, you know, uh, made a big shout about, but as far as just that face that just really transcends yeah. the company. No, I mean, other than no, I mean, I, no one really, I mean, there's, there's I mean, bro, you got, I, I, let, let me just make one thing perfectly clear and you guys can look at the number tomorrow. You've got, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, the two biggest baby faces on the Raw roster. Bro, nobody's watching this show. Mm. Nope. They're Raw's going Raw. Raw's <laughs> yeah. to do tomorrow about 1.5 million people. Mm. SmackDown almost did 2.5 middle. Why, bro? Because you got the Rock and Roman Reigns there. Right. That's why. Yeah. They're not tuning in to see Cody and Seth Rollins, bro. And yeah. if that's the face of the company, good luck, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you there, man. I've said that. Uh, I said that plenty of times. I agree with you wholeheartedly as far as just you're not building 
transcend, you know, like stars to transcend the business. And then that, and it goes back to was Ryback right the whole time as far as just that yeah. philosophy of, you know, they're only going to hold you at, post Cena. You know, I think even Ryback said that Triple H told him that like post Cena, yep. no one's going to be bigger than the business. And if Ryback said that, if Ryback said Triple H told him that, who can tell us otherwise? Who can prove that wrong? Because since since Cena era, I don't, I can't tell you someone other than Roman Reigns, they've protected him. But I don't, I can't think of anyone. Yeah, well, 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 the guy you had the biggest opportunity with was Bray, and look what happened with how Man, they booked him. The ball. I mean, my God, bro, come on, that was up and down like a freaking yeah. bro. If if I, I'm I'm telling you, bro, I, I am telling you from experience. If you if you couldn't get a guy like Bray Wyatt over. You, you should be nowhere near the wrestling business. You mm -hmm. should be a salesman or a school teacher or a fireman. You should be nowhere near the wrestling business, bro. Yeah, and he had an amazing mind for the business. Uh, we got Retro Neon, $5. <clears throat> if Cody beats Roman, who does he face? You don't have much in terms of star power. Maybe Drew, but if Drew wins the title uh, from Seth, then who? Which brings a point that I was <clears throat> thinking about, too. So you have two of the biggest, uh, so you have two champions, two, two title contenders. They're both on the raw brand. So if Drew beats Seth and Cody beats Roman, that, that means they're going to, the two world champions are going to be on the raw brand. So someone would have to defect to SmackDown. Does Cody defect to SmackDown if he beats Roman then? Bro, Cody is losing. I mean, I'm with you there, but but I think I think Cody, I think the WWE wants Cody to win. So say, for instance, Cody does win. Well, bro, think about that. Because go? Then if they say, like you said, bro, you predict Cody and Seth. Then they're going to put Seth over on Raw too. I mean, on SmackDown too. That see, that would be something that would be somehow. You can have you know how WWE's booking is somehow on a random SmackDown you have you have Seth be there and attack yeah, Cody. You know what I mean? It's just something. It's random. funny because I'm I'm looking today because we didn't you know really talk about this show at, at all. But <laughs> when can somebody, bro, Chris, you and I watch this show every week? Correct. Yes, we do. You know, I got my notes here. I watch this show. Hey, bro, I take it very seriously, man. When Sports Kid is paying me, I'm watching this show. I've watched every episode of this show. Can somebody tell me where I missed the Becky Lynch against the world angle? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what? All of a sudden, to Becky Lynch, oh, it's me against the world. Where did that come from? Like, th this is where this company makes me freaking laugh. Now, all of a sudden, it's Becky Lynch against the world because she says so. Where did that freaking come from, Chris? Yeah, and and, and we'll get to the show after these super chats, man. Oh it's, my god! Yeah, and she I, had a I, great line. She had the best line of the show. That line about when people are behind me, I'm good. When they were against, that was a great line. Yeah. But I don't know how it got to Becky against the world. I I think it's just it seems like she's going against the grain right now, and I, I you know I, people. Here's my thing, man. It, I'm not a fan of just going with the pulse of the crowd all the time. You got, you have to create a team needs to do a better job with uh, grabbing the emotion of the crowd instead of allowing the crowd to affect their writing so much. Yeah, yeah. But when something's organic, let it go. Let it yeah. go, man. And I think at the end of the day. Like Tiffany Stratton, you know, is 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 organically a babyface right now. Let it go, Turner. You know, what I mean, Turner. I mean, and and Rhea's, you know, she's getting cheered. Turner. You know, what I mean, like, and, oh like, yeah, we 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 always did like that. that. You, Chris, we always we always did that. Yeah. Oh, what, what, why are you gonna fight an uphill battle? Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's it's not. You have to think about it from a longevity standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. How is this? How is this helping current baby faces if the heels are organically being cheered 
more than the baby faces are. Tiffany Stratton, every time she's she beats Naomi, she beats uh, who she beat, uh, uh, Mi Chin, Mia Yim, uh, Reese, uh, on SmackDown, right? So those are the baby faces going into the match. They're not being cheered. You're supposed to have the baby face be the one who's cheered, yep. and they're going against the grain by having them go against Tiffany Stratton. For what? It doesn't help any of them. And now they're talking about rumors of Bianca Belair and Tiffany Stratton. I think that's, I think that's crap, man, because Bianca Belair, although people respect the heck out of her, She's not going like that. Things comes in waves, man. And when like, why in the world would you be in standing in a in a, uh, a sea and you know that the wave is coming and you're trying to go against yeah, it? Right. Like, like no, well, why yeah. would you do that? It right. makes, you have to go with it. You have to go with the current, go to wave. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what they're doing, well, they do that a lot, man. They just look at the wave. They're like, oh, let's just keep going. Like, that just doesn't make sense, man. Yeah. Tiffany Stratton is, is, she's, you know, she, she's being coming in babyface. The fans like her. Okay. Make her, I mean, she can have like a Trish Stratus type of feel to her. If they really, if they really use her the right way, she could become potentially the biggest baby face in, in the WWE. Yeah. You know what I mean? She can trans Tiffany Stratton has ability. I'm not really sold on her that much, but I can respect the fans. I mean, look, athleticism, beauty. I, I, I can respect that. If the fans like her, go with it. I mean, like make her one of the top baby faces in the company. Uh, you have Rollin, 1999. I think that Roman has lost a lot of that big fight appeal, and he's been dwarfed by The Rock. The bigger fight has to be the man who fans sent death threats to versus the man who fans sent the death threats for Roman and his old news. So he's saying Rock versus Cody, to your point. Well, yeah, and Rollin, like, bro, like, uh, you know, listen, Roman's great. How is The Rock not going to upstage him? You, mm, yeah. you know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, you, what, what are you going to do? And, bro, mm. listen, Rock is not the kind of guy that's going to go out there and put himself over and, mm. and make Reigns a secondary character, especially the fact that they're blood. Yeah. I mean, you know, bro, they're blood. Rock ain't that kind of guy. But, I mean, bro, when the guy walks out, Come on, man. Like any, yeah. any, anybody's going to be in his shadow, man. He, you know, he's a character, man. He's a movie star. He understands how characters work because he's in the movie business. Yeah. He has a, he has his own production company. So he emphasizes characters. I wish someone that works at seven bucks can get like a consulting job. Like Brian Gerwitz come back and, and consult because the attitude era, even the the eras before that, they really emphasize characters. Now the emphasis is wrestling, and yeah. you see the stark contrast between a wrestling heavy business and a character heavy business. Man, you, 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 you you guys saw the last 30, 40 minutes of Raw tonight. I, I I just kept sitting there, and I swear to God, I kept saying out loud, "Who, who who's watching this?" No. Yeah. Like who's 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 watching? Like really, bro? Who's watching that? That's what I kept asking myself. Yeah, yeah. Can't blame me there. <clears throat> Gen Z philosophy. Cody cries because basically he wanted his father to see him as a son at Dusty's level, and he will never get the chance. Sad he hasn't. That's come a that, po very good point, Gen Z. Who? That's why I said the guy really needs freaking therapy. I'm I'm yeah. serious, bro. Yeah. Gen Z also says 199. Thank you. Well, Problem thank with Sammy's physique. Period. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You 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 guys look when 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 you, like at the end, especially. I think there was one point where Gable took his his gimmick down. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. If yep. these two if these two guys were fighting, but for real, come. That oh, yeah. that's that's the problem I have. If these two guys were fighting in a bar, oh come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. Chat all day. You got Gen Z once again 199. Logan Paul is that next transcendent star. LOL. I mean, they're bringing in, you know, he as a celebrity man, for, for him to be there for a good solid two years strong and to basically make so many other people look 
so, like they, he, he achieved in two years as far as stardom, what people who's been there 10 plus years is still trying to do, you know what I mean? So, 1,000%. Yeah. All right, Vince, I'll let you run through the uh, show, man. Well, yeah, so we got Becky and Liv. Um, bro, this went through three commercial breaks, and, yeah. and, and I got – you know, my, my question here is, bro, what, what are the stakes that this is going through three commercial breaks? I mean, come on, bro. Like, seriously. And then, like I said, man, all of a sudden we've got Becky against the world where I have no idea where that came from. Yeah. Bro, then you got the pre and uh, and uh, Niall, the worst acting I have ever seen in my life, bro, between uh, Dupree and and uh, LaRue, this was horrible. They're trying to play off of what happened where the people, b come on, bro. If, if you're going to do something like that, bro, you got to do it in a believable fashion with people that know how to do it. Yeah. This was literally ninth school, ninth school play, bro. Question for you real quick. Before that was the six-pack ladder match announcement. Why would they throw that in there while having uh, weeks and weeks and weeks of this R Troop Judgment Day angle just for him to be possibly one team with, with the Awesome Truth? What, what Do you think that that was planned or they just threw that in there just last minute? Uh, that was probably a last minute thing. Yeah. Why would that? That doesn't make sense. Like you've been building this story up just for them to possibly be a team in a six pack ladder match. That didn't make sense to me. Yeah. Uh, um, Cody then, Rose, then, then he got the Cody promo when, when he started going. This, this story isn't about me. This story is all about you. It's about Hannah and Holly. And no, bro, the story's about you. <laughs> not the not, not Holly, not Hannah, not Vince Russo, not Jerry Springer. The story. This, this is what I mean about. Don't give me the story is about all you people. Oh my God, that makes me want to vomit in my own mouth, bro. But they played to it though, just like uh, sheep. Then like we sheep. got uh let's see. We Lynch got, and Morgan uh shake hands and Anaya attacks. Yeah, Naya attacks and, and another Becky Naya match next yep. week. I, I think that. I think I this is the you. third match in the last four weeks. Yes, I told you by the end by, by WrestleMania time, Becky Lynch is going to beat Nia Jax. I, I told you, and that's what's yeah. gonna happen next week, man. Yeah, uh then, Kabuki Warriors and Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I mean, that, that match was dead, man. You got two heel teams going against each other, and the re fans reacted. Then we got Judgment Day trying to get Andrade in the fold. Yep. Um, we got Truth over uh, Priest over Truth, yep. and then Heat on DU. Oh, my God, bro. I swear <laughs> to God. There, there, there was a point in that match where Johnny got – Bro, you know how Cody was talking about Hannah in, in his promo? Uh, Johnny Gargano was punching like Hannah. So, so you got a guy who wears who weighs 150 pounds punching like a woman who weighs 95 pounds. Oh, that that that, that that's over to me, bro. Mm. Uh, then you got Jey Uso. What you just? I want my brother at WrestleMania. Uh, then Becky, you know, gave you the me against the world. Uh, then you had the gauntlet match that went on for the next uh, 40 minutes. Yeah. Bro, what do you think about one of the teams uh, in the tournament being uh, 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 what's his, Nashir and who's the other guy? Oh, bro? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Nashir. I, saw, I, I saw that graphic. I laughed yeah. out loud. Like, oh, who's who's winning that match, bro? And where the heck did uh, the gender hype leak go, know, man? They just, bro. they just, yeah. he came I, in, did a bit yeah. against The Rock, did a bit against Seth. And that's it. Hey, man, you know what? If the guy's getting a paycheck every week, God so bless you. Yeah. God bless you, my yeah, friend. Vacations. All right, uh, last Super Chat for the night. Retro Neon, $5. Also, to be honest, when it comes to the next crop of talent, they better keep protecting Brown Breaker and Tiffany Stratton. Also, Trick Williams is the Booker T. All right, I really like – how much you know about Trick Williams? I don't know anything. Yeah, I think he's money, man. He's actually one of my favorite uh, people in – I think he's one of the most the the biggest one potential people in the WWE now. He's uh, in NXT right now. He was. Um, I saw a graphic of him tonight, but I've never seen him. Yeah, so him and Carmelo Hayes were like a, 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 a 
team yeah. and then Carmelo turned on him. So he was like his first protector. Like he first was like his, his accomplice. Uh, and then they became a team and now he's really, it's really grown into um, potential superstar level. Zubair, $5. <laughs> Wanted to say was wishing you and Russo good health and well wishes to Russo and his battle with diabetes. Keep on. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah, our whoop, our whoop, whoop girls were on the shelf again tonight. <laughs> yep, no whoop, whoop. <laughs> and you see who else is in the freaking tournament too? Who else? The, the Beverly Brothers. Where where have, they, where have they been, bro? They have not been on this show in at least eight weeks. Another another hot and cold booking, man. Oh, how booking. do you do that? How do you do that, bro? Yeah. How does anybody get over that way? Because it makes everybody else that you beat. If if you're if you're in a hot and cold booking, when you get cold, and then they try to bring some type of relevance to the teams you beat, it makes that harder. That that you're okay. Well, you beat Imperium, but now you want Imperium to beat the New Day. But the New Day's in the tournament. It's just a lot of mumbo jumbo, and it doesn't. It, it's just counterproductive to book. Yeah, I agree, man. Let the listeners know where to find you, my man. Yeah, guys, please. A uh, real real quick, man. If you've never been a Patreon subscriber, you could go there right now, bro. Patreon.com forward slash Russo T W C and get a free week of the brand, bro. It will cost you absolutely nothing. Patreon.com forward slash Russo T W C. Nice. We got uh, one more C B three. Amazing. You think a velveteen dream can come change WWE? What do you think? No, 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 no one person's going to change. Yeah, I agree. WWE, yeah. Bro. No, no, nobody, nobody. This guy right here is Vince Russo. I'm Dr. Chris. This is Legion of Raw. Have a good night, buddy. Solo. <laughs>